last video, we actually coded our mole script, which is here, and we pretty much only did hide mole. So when we test it and we push play, you'll see all of our moles get hidden. Well, in this video, we need to show them, and what we want to do is we want our mole to randomly show up in these nine positions um, every one and a half seconds. So this video will deal with that. Well, first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to add one thing to our mole script inside of mole.cs, and then we're going to pretty much show the moles inside of game controller because this actually controls the game and a part of controlling the game is to know when to show these different guys. So inside of mole, what we first need to do is this X, Y, and Z is different from this X, Y, and Z, which is different from this X, Y, and Z. Um, the Y's are always going to be the same because remember we set a visible Y height of 2 and we set an invisible a hidden Y height of 1.6. So these two values will always be the same for our moles, but the X and Z's will always change. So when it awakes, we need to first get where this current position is. We're going to hide them and then set that transition point. So let's go back into our code. If I go up to, we made our awake, hide the mole. Here, I need to set our current position. So I'm going to say transform dot local position is equal to my new XY. So pretty much when it wakes hide mole gets the X puts it at a hidden Y gets the current Z. It does not change the X or the Z. That does that. And then I just want to say, hey, my current position is this. That way I know this XY versus this XY. So again, let's just test it to see that we didn't do any harm. Everything is kind of hidden. So now we want to go ahead and actually start to show these guys. So over here in Game Controller is where we're going to show these. And we already have this code, we're going to add to it. So these were my timer variables. I'm going to go ahead and make a comment. These are going to be my mole variables. And what we're going to need is we're going to need to get all of the moles from Unity. And we're also going to need to save those moles inside a list or an array that we can reference. So we can pick one of the random ones for our list and show that mole. So to start, Again, to get our reference from Unity, we did it up here, public, and then we dragged it in inside of Unity. So I'm going to do public for our mole container. It's a game object. I'm going to call it mole container. And this is our reference to our mole container in Unity. Now, the list that I want to hold of moles, I'm going to do private and say mole that makes an array and I'm going to call it moles so moles since we made this script now it understands that it we're getting an array of these moles and each mole can hide um, a can hide and do whatever else we add inside of this script. So to get our moles, let's do that on start. So we're going to get all the moles from the mole container and put them inside of this list. Well first we need to set up a reference. So if we go back to Unity and I scroll down and click on Game Controller. Unity should update, and now you can see mole container, none, game object. I need to set my mole container. I'm going to drag this guy and set it right in there. 
So now I have a reference to this mole container. And if you notice, this mole container has all of our moles inside of it. So inside of coding now, I can use this mole container to get all our moles and place it in a list. So let's go ahead and do that. So inside of start, let's do get all our moles from unity mole container. I'm going to say put all our moles into a into our list moles. So here I'm going to say moles, which we called our list, is equal to mole container dot get. I want to say components in children. So I want to get all of the the type is going to be of mole. I'll put my parentheses and I'll put that. So what this is saying is get the mole container, get all the kids, if they are a mole, and place them in this list. So it comes here. Here's my mole container. Is this a mole? Yes it is. Is this a mole? Yes it is. Is this a mole? Yes it is. It gets all these moles and it places it inside of our list that we called moles. Now if we wanted to test that this is working, we could simply do a printout to our screen. So let's do that. Let's do debug dot log And I'll do that. I'm just going to print moles to the screen. So let's say number of moles. And then I'll do a plus moles dot length. So the length of our list. Let's go ahead and save that. And when I press play, it should hide the mole still. We're not showing it yet. But I should see number of moles, and it should say the number of moles that it found from this. Let's go ahead and push play. Moles still hidden. I come here, number of moles is 9. All right. So, coming back in here, and you can see that's getting the number of moles. And I'll just comment that completely out. Now let's work on our show. So, back in mole, we have a hide mole. We don't have a show mole. So let's go ahead and do that. Show. The mole. Do the exact same way. Public void show mole. We can call it whatever we want. We do when we put our breakouts. And then inside of here, I'm going to set the current position to visible y height. I'm going to say transform dot local position is equal to new. Vector 3, I'll put my semicolon at the end, and I'll put my x, y, and z in the middle. I'm going to say transform dot local position dot x, comma, this will be my visible y height, and this will be transform dot local position dot z. So the only difference between show and hide mole is our y. Is it the hidden y height or is it the visible y height? These two look the same, but there's one small change. We were just trying to hide mole. We did transform that. We're updating that. But really, we're saving that position. Remember my new x, y position that we made? We need to do that instead of calling transforming it automatically. So 
we're doing, I'm going to delete this. And it's going to say my new XYZ position is equal to this hidden location. And I'm going to do the exact same thing down here. My new XYZ position is equal to that same thing down here. Now, we have a show mole. We're going to call it from over in game controller. And let's say every one and a half seconds we want to show the mole. So over here, in order to do that, we're going to need another timer. I'll just call it show mole timer. So if we have a gamer timer, we'll call it these are mole variables. So right here, I'm going to do and I might want to change this, so I'm going to make it public. Public float show mole timer. And let's say 1.5 F which is show mole every 1.5 seconds. And when this gets to zero, we will show a new mole. And we're gonna show a new mole from one of these random locations. So inside of our update game timer, if game is currently playing, whack a mole and you can see it has a game timer there. I'll just do some space down here. I'm gonna do show mole. So what I want to check is show mole if show mole timer is zero. So I'm going to do an if statement here. If, and this is called a nested if statement. So this happens only if the game timer is greater than zero and the show mole timer is whatever we set it to be. So I'm going to say show mole timer is less than 0f. That means I want to show any one of these nine moles that we selected from here. So I want to pick a random mole. list of moles. So I'm going to say moles random dot range for the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is moles dot length dot show mole like that. So just looking at this sentence here if show mole timer is less than zero. Well first we have to decrease show mole timer minus equals time dot delta time. If mole timer is less than zero we need to show a new mole. So from our list of moles we're gonna pick a random number from zero to nine because we have nine moles. Once it gets that, so say it picks eight, it's going to pick the eighth mole, and then it's going to call show mole. Show mole comes from here, from the mole class that we made. So I, it, it is calling different, calling different classes. It's calling this function from over here, but kind of follow the process. Again, just to go through it, show mole, we're going to decrease it. If it's less than zero seconds, that means we want to pick another random mole from our list and then call show mole. It'll pick the third one, the fourth one. So let's just go ahead and save this and go ahead and test it. What we should see is every one and a half seconds, the mole will start showing. So since we're decreasing this, once it gets to zero, the other thing we have to do is reset it, right? So reset the show mole timer to 1.5 seconds. So here we'll say show mole timer is equal to 1.5f. And there we go. Now we're good. What we're doing is first we're going to subtract some time from the show mole timer. If the show mole timer is less than zero, we're going to randomly pick from our list of moles from zero to the length, which is nine currently, 
it'll pick a number between that. Say it picks the third mole, and then it's going to call show mole. And show mole comes from the mole class that we made, which should make it actually show up. And since it's less than zero, we're going to reset it for this mole. So let's go ahead and save that and try it. Push play. And we should see this every one and a half seconds. So we have an error. That's why it's good to always test as you add in some code. So we want to see why our show mole is not working. Well, earlier I showed you how to use debug. So we could actually test this. The code we added was here. So let's just add a simple debug.log statement here and say testing inside show mole timer. And this calls show mole from over here. So let's just go inside of here and let's do a debug statement over here dot log and we'll say inside show mole. So this is how you actually debug and debug your code um, to figure out what is going on and why it's not currently working. I know why it's not working, but I wanted to show you this. So let's go ahead and push play so you can see what happens when you debug this. So I push play. Same thing happens. We look at our console. You can see it says testing inside show mole timer. It's calling inside show mole and it's doing it over and over again. So something's not happening. Well, here's what's happening. And you can see it is working because it's showing us in our log. So let's go ahead and get rid of that and then let me tell you what the error is. So I'll delete this. And I will come over here and delete this debug statement. So we know we're getting inside of here because it showed. And we know we're calling show mole over here. Well, why isn't it showing? Well, here's what show mole does. It simply sets the X, Y, and Z position. But remember, for us to show transition, to show anything, we need to set something inside of update. So inside of update, we want to move from the current position to the new X, Y, Z position. So right in here, I'm gonna say move, all to the new x, y, z position. So when we move the mole, we're going to actually want to move at a speed. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more. I'm going to make this public. Make it a float. I'm going to call it speed. Let's say 4f for now. We'll call it speed the mole moves. So now, if we go down side of here, I want to go ahead and update my position. So to update my position, we'll say transform that local position, which you could be used for, is equal to vector three dot lerp. This this is a linear transition between two points. And you can see it here, linear interpolate between two vectors. So inside of here, I got to give it, if you look at it, I have to give it where I'm currently at and where I want to go. Well, where I'm currently at is transform that local position. Where do I want to go is my new x, y, b position. And then you see I have to give it a time or a speed. So I'm going to say time dot delta time times the speed that we just set. This is the reason why we were not seeing the actual motion every time it moved, or we should call show mole. It wasn't updating because we did not do anything inside of our update script. 
So now let's go ahead and save this and go ahead and retest it. And what we should see is our moles should start. Originally all of them will hide and then one by one each of them will show. So go ahead and push play. There you go. Two, three, four, five, six. So it's randomly calling these guys. They show up one by one. Last part of the video that we want to do is they show, but we want them to hide. So after they show, every one and a half seconds, we want the moles to actually hide. So that'll happen inside of our mole script. So if we go back to this, our game controller, this is handling showing our moles every one and a half seconds, but we want to also, in here, we'll say every one and a half seconds we want to hide the mole. So inside of here, our mole, showing high variables, I'm going to do one other one. I'm going to say public float hide mole timer. I'm going to equal it to 1.5. And this is going to be the timer to hide the mole after it shows. I'll save that. And what I will do, hide mole if timer less than zero. So I'm going to say if, well first thing we want to do is go ahead and decrease our hide mole timer. So, so minus equals time dot delta time. I'm going to say if hide mole timer is less than zero, we're going to call hide mole. So inside of our mole, if every one and a half seconds, pretty much we're going to hide our mole. And which means anytime we show our mole, we need to reset that timer. So down here, I'm going to say reset the hide mole timer to 1.5 seconds before hiding. So here I'll say hide mole timer 1.5 F. And now what we should have is whenever our mole is shown, we're setting a timer to uh, one and a half seconds. Remember every second, every frame this is called, it's going to decrease that hide mole timer. If it ever gets less than zero, then we're going to hide that mole. This takes care of showing our mole every one and a half seconds. This inside of mole is taking care of hiding our moles every one and a half seconds. Let's go ahead and test it. There you go. You can see every one and a half seconds, a random mole is getting chosen. He shows and he's hiding. And some moles might get chosen twice because it got randomly selected twice. We'll let this go ahead and run down to zero and you can see the mole should stop. And there you go, game over. That's it for showing the mole. In the next and last video that you're going to work on, we're actually going to code when you hit the moles it updates the score and it also hides the mole. Once we're done with that, 
we will show you how to load this on the Oculus Go's and you can test your actual game in the classroom by loading your whack-a-mole game and playing it with the Oculus Go or an Oculus Rift if you have it inside of your class. Go ahead and head over to the next video.